Hey everybody, it's Lars here. I am bringing you my deck that I ran in the Xyz Festival here to get my 3200 medals for the big rewards. I didn't really want to push too much further because it's a lot of extra. But I went ahead and grabbed this and uh, grabbed all those uh, subs with this. Played about six games with it. I'll showcase uh, five of those. One of them um, was against a Exodia deck kind of thing that just draws, and I basically was not allowed to play the game. So it's a long, boring game with no interaction, so I just will skip over that one. But I did lose that one. Um, anyway, so here's the deck. Uh, we got two Effect Veilers and an Ash for Hand Traps, because I would have probably just run three Ash, but I don't have three Ash on this account, so unfortunate. Uh, two Witch of the Black Forest, because with Xyz uh, summoning, Witch of the Black Forest isn't as good, but she is good with other things, and she's a spellcaster, so she does play with the other um, familiars uh, pretty well. We have three Area, because she's water. We have two Inari three uh, Nefarious Archfiend, and three Gigabyte, because these are going to special summon from our hand, and we can only have one of a given type, so one Gigabyte, one Nefarious, one Inari. So we don't want to always draw multiples of each. Uh, but I did want three uh, Nefarious for the ability to go into the, the Nefariouser for more plays. I did want three Gigabytes so I could go into certain Water XCs plays with Area. Um... And then we have one Lynn because she's light and there's no other lights in the deck, so she can help with the Awakening of the Possessed, help bump attack up with just that, and to activate uh, uh, Possessed Partnerships uh, if we happen to draw her, because not a lot of the cards in the deck have 1500 defense. Um, then we're running three Zoroa because he can special summon spellcasters from our hand by equipping himself with a Magistus card, so we can just equip with the um, Nina Ruru, Ruru Magistus and just special summon from hand and we can make a play off of that. Uh, one uh, Awakening of the Possessed Nefarious Archfiend, so we can search out spell traps and we can trigger some stuff. Uh, he's pretty nice. And then we've got Raigeki and Lightning Storm to clear stuff, Monster Reborn to revive, Terraforming to search out our Secret Village of Spellcasters, which will negate their spells while we have Spellcasters in play. Good stuff. Awakening of the Possessed so that we can just pump our attack and just swing in at them. I actually won a game just purely off of these cards here. Because, yeah. Three Forbidden Chalice. These would be uh, Imperms, but I don't have them. I don't have the URs for those, so budget Imperms. One double or nothing to go with our Utopia, Utopia double combo, which is a game ender here. It's very nice. Two Twin Twisters in the case we end up against the Numeron deck or any other back row heavy deck. It's pretty nice to have. Two Spirit Charmers. I cut from three to two just because we don't have as many of the... Um... We have about the same amount of viable targets, but... Sometimes this card just, when you draw it, it helps, but it gets negated pretty easily. So I just wanted to cut to two to make room for other stuff. Two possessed partnerships for popping and special summoning, and one unpossessed in case we get uh, our opponent gets a little bigger than us and we just need to stall out a little bit, just for summoning stuff and just keep going. Okay, the extra deck. Here's where it differs from the other decks I've been running. One totally awesome, and a Bahamut shark to summon him. This is great. You make them with your area and your gigabyte, and you just summon a totally awesome. Free negate. 2200 attack as well, so he's pretty he's pretty decently strong. Pretty nice. Um, Thunder Spark, we can very easily get three monsters on board, three level fours, if we draw a bunch of, like, if we draw Zoroa, Spellcasters, and then these summoning guys. So he can be pretty good to pop stuff. My stroke, he was a uh, pretty cheap. I had enough SRs to just grab. He seemed like he could stall if needed. Not that great. Herald number 18, just kind of if our opponent has a bunch of things on board with the same name, we can maybe pop pop some. That's all I. It's just a tech. Level and Sin is a neutral, easy to grab, just summon it and swing. Uh, Tornado Dragon for back row. Baguska for stall. Utopia double and Utopia for the combo, so we can one-shot somebody if uh, they just have something on board that we can just attack into for damage. Uh, Nina Ruru to combo with Zoroa for the plays. 
Vespinato to stack on top of a rank four just to boost. Like if we just have to make a rank four and then boost on top of it. We can go into Vespinato, then we can go into Zeus. And then we have one Zeus. Just for cleaning things up. And I skipped over one thing, didn't I? Oh yeah. Dark Rebellion next he's Dragon. Uh he can get big. That's it. Just big dude. I didn't end up playing like half of these cards in the extra deck. I played Totally, Bahamut, Utopias, and Tornado Dragon, I believe. And that's roughly all I ended up playing from the extra deck. So a lot of these are just extra tech options. And some of them are just big beaters. Uh, but they're, they're, they're good. They're fun. Um, so uh, let's go get into the games real quick. I'm just going to do the quick replays. I'll run through them. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun. Okay, so this was a very quick match. Um... Our opponent just, uh, our opponent went first, we went second, and because of the way things have been going, I have opted to go second with most of these matches, just for the sake of potentially going for a big swing and w winning the game. But our opponent summons a ZS Ascended Sage, and then we just go into the full Utopia. Zoroa into Gigabyte, summon double. Grab double or nothing. Summon Utopia. And then all we do is attack, cancel our attack, double up, and swing in for game. Pretty quick game. Big old 9,100 damage to the dome. So, um, that was the first game. I played about six games, as I said, um, here. And so that's game one. Here's game numero dos. Coming in hot with... Uh, I don't really know what this guy was playing. Oh, no, he was, he was playing Numerons. So this guy was playing Numerons. And I gave him the first turn. And this hand is like, eh. But then... ka -chow, We draw a Spellcaster. So... Summon Witch, Summon Gigabyte, Summon Nefarious, activate Double Awakening of the Possessed, and swing at him for game. <laughs> but if we didn't kill him this turn, he would have killed us on the next turn with Numeron combo, so. But that's why I opted to go for uh, second for most of these, because if my opponent was playing, like, the Numeron thing, then I don't want them to go first. Okay, this is the game that went on the longest. This was a 16-turn game against a very stall-heavy deck. And honestly, the MVP of this game was Nefarious Archfiend. If it wasn't for that card, I think I would have lost this game, 100%. So, double Solemn off of the top. So he grabs one of those. And that card there prevents me from setting more than one card a turn. And if he attacks, he can negate the attack and pop a face down card, a uh, spell or trap. So I try to go into some stuff. Good old Morphing Jar. I figured I didn't want it all in on a... Oh, it also prevents my special summon monsters from the extra deck from attacking on the turn they're played. So I tried to Tornado Dragon, and he solemns it. So there goes Tornado Dragon. But now he can not he can only set one card every turn as well. So he's locked into the same restriction I am. And I don't want him getting any kind of field spell. And you'll see why in a minute. <laughs> so we go ahead and negate that with Ash. Because we don't want any of that happening. Sets th he has three set cards. So pretty much he's going to just bounce or negate every attack I try to do. So I went in to try to do something. I forgot even what I made here. Oh, I made Baguska. I thought if he's got a targeted attack thing, I would get Baguska out and I would just negate the targeting. But he's got that instead. So he flips all my stuff face down. And here comes the big old unfortunate friend. The Lava Golem. And that card, Dark Sanctuary. That's the field spell he wanted to get. 
So that's where Nefarious Archfiend actually came in clutch. I got to sacrifice the Lava Golem to prevent him from burning me every turn. But Dark Sanctuary, unfortunately, is a coin toss field spell that negates attacks and deals damage to me if he gets a heads. And the damage is equal to half of the attack of the monster that I attacked with. So if I had the Lava Golem still and I was swinging, I'd be taking 1500 every time he, he hit heads. So at this point, I try to go ahead and special summon so I can pop the Dark Sanctuary, but he solemns that too, bringing him to a lowly 1625 health. But he has control of the game, because he can keep flipping my stuff face down and negating my attacks with Dark Sanctuary, so I have to be very careful with how I play this. And... <laughs> So he has a Wabaku to prevent any damage so he doesn't get even lower. And I keep taking 750. 750 a turn here. I can't flip my Witch of the Black Forest face up either because of the fact because of his trap card that he used on it earlier. So now he has Macrocosmos active, so any of my cards that die, and any of his cards that die on the field, are now s removed from play instead of being sent to the graveyard. And he flips all my cards face down again. And I don't take the damage here. If I took that damage, I probably would be screwed. But now... He gets to go ahead and grab a card from his graveyard. Lava Golem's back, and he's gonna summon it. So if I had been taking the Lava Golem damage per turn from before, I would be probably dead or close to dead by this point. we had gone through enough turns where Lava Golem would have taken at least another 2 or 3k off of me. So I couldn't even attack without really risking my life. But we go for it. We see what we got. And we take the 750. And round 2. And we're good. Sangan. Sangan is search for... Oh, we can't search, right. Macrocosmos prevented the search. That actually bought me another turn. Because he probably would have just searched another Morphing Jar or something. But now we know he's got Morphing Jar face down. A hidden face down card, which I don't know what it is. We're setting up to maybe give ourselves the win if it's nothing. So we Spirit Charmers to search for Awakening, awakening of the Possessed and set a Possessed Partnership. So we activate Awakening so we can boost the attack of our monsters. Morphing into our value, we draw a bunch of cards. And we attack to try to end the game. But he, he goes ahead and uses Drowning Mirror Force to return to the deck. And it was a gamble that paid off, because if he didn't, we would have won the game right then and there. So we go ahead and summon area for the turn, and we draw these two cards, which I'll set Twin Twisters and activate. So that way he can't activate spells from his hand. And here's where I misplayed. I should have just gone ahead and Twin Twistered Macrocosmos and the uh, Dark Sanctuary, and then Possess Partnerships, one of his monsters. Instead, I end up using Twin Twisters on one target, and not really getting much value there. But he summons Nightmare Shark in defense mode to try to stall the game a little longer. Unfortunately for him, I've got Rageki. Okay, with two water monsters on the board, we're going to go ahead and go right into Bahamut Shark. If our opponent could stop this, we would lose. We go from Bahamut Shark into Totally Awesome. Now we can negate his face down if he activates it. And we swing with Zoroa for game. So... 
that was probably my best game of this whole thing because it was just a lot of back and forth. We did a lot of stuff. He stalled me out. There was a lot of playing there, and it was fun. And again, Nefarious Archfiend, big MVP on that one. Without him, Lava Golem would have killed us 100%. <laughs> All right, time for the next one. Okay, I... I forgot what this one... I forgot what my opponent was playing on this one as well. This might have been the Cypher guy? No, the Cypher guy was the last one I fought. Okay, so we get an area and we set Awakening of, of the Possessed. And we just summon area and we draw a card. Oh, wait, no, this is the Cyber Dragon guy. I remember now. So I make a big old misplay on this game where I try to affect Veil or something. That just bad idea. And you'll see here in a second. So he cyber emergencies the cyber dragon core. Then he machine dupes it. Or he cyber summons cyber dragon core. Machine dupes. And now he goes into Nova. Immediately then goes into infinity. And now I have this thing that I have to deal with. So I try to affect Valor it to prevent its effects, but then he just negates it. And then he eats my area, which is unfortunate. Goodbye, area. So, area's gone. I take the damage. And, uh... Yeah, let's see what happens. My turn. So we draw into terraforming. And I figure, I'm gonna activate terraforming, and he's gonna negate it. Which he does. That opens me up to using Raigeki to clear his board. So... I use Raigeki and clear his board. Summon area and draw a card. He Call of the Haunted brings back Cyber Dragon Core. And I thought, okay, I don't need to Twin Twisters that. I'll just let it be, because he has nothing else on board. And I drew an Inari, so we can go right into the Utopia combo. And that's that's game, honestly. Because, uh, what is it, 10,000 versus 400? That's a win. And yeah, there it is. Boom. Oh, it was... I guess it was a... Oh, it was, it was 5,300 because Awakening of the Possessed, then doubled. Okay. Okay, last game. This is against uh, Cyphers, which I've never seen before or played against before, so it's kind of cool. And we kind of had this dude on, on the lock. We, we had him locked out of the game, kind of, so... So, right off the bat, we draw area, double gigabyte, and go ahead and terraforming, search for our secret village. Spirit charmers, discard a gigabyte, because we can't play two, and grab ourselves a Lena. Setting possessed. So, summon area and gigabyte, go into the Bahamut Shark totally awesome combo. And then I throw down secret village for when I special summon lean off of possessed partnerships, we can negate any further spells he plays. If we so choose. But he doesn't do anything, so we just kind of let it roll. We summon Lena so that Seeker Village is in play and active. And then we swing at him for 4,800. So I had no idea what Cyphers did. And I still kind of don't, but uh, he was going for plays. So we'll see. So he summons the Twin Raptor. Special summons a Biplane and the Etranger. And the Etranger is a spellcaster, so it turns off my Secret Village. But we totally awesome his Biplane because it was going to set their levels to 8 and allow him to go into a rank 8 Xyz, which I did not want. And then we stole his Biplane. And return Totally Awesome to the deck, so that way we can use him again next turn off of Bahamut Shark. And for some reason, my opponent just attacked his own card. So we popped away the Atranger, just in case those things are spells that he has face down. We don't want him activating those. 
and we drew ourselves a uh, Archfiend. So we go ahead and go right into a Tornado Dragon to pop one of the back row. Get it out of there. And it was a Shrink, so it was a spell card. We bring out Totally Awesome to counteract any further plays he tries to do. And we just go in for game. So, um, all in all, that was my experience with the Xyz Festival using Charmers. And uh, it was pretty fun. We didn't face anything insanely powerful. Um, and the one game I did not show was just a game where I let my opponent go first. He summoned a Royal Magical Library, and he just played Bamboo Swords, Chicken Games, Upstart Goblins, drawing out his whole deck, until he got to the point where he had a spell on board that negates me, negates both players from being able to use Main Phase 2, and a Bamboo Sword that after he plays another Bamboo Sword, I can't take my next Main Phase 1. And so I wasn't even allowed to play the game at all. So we just skipped over that one, because it wasn't interactive or engaging at all. Although some of these weren't for my opponents as well. But, uh, yeah, that was the XYZ Festival uh, with Charmers. It was pretty fun. I thought, I, I really look forward to more of these festivals because it just, it kind of cleans out a little bit of the, the links and stuff. So it slows it down here and there a little bit. There's still some crazy fast stuff you can do. Um, and you can end games real quick still. But there's less of that, there's definitely less of the whole, you know, Drytron and all that other stuff. And also being not being able to, face off against Eldritch for a little bit was fun too but uh yeah we'll see what happens with the next festival and uh i'll keep doing more charmers and stuff and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching later